in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about my first, this is going to be my first Canada podcast, and what I did over there, the fishing, the travel, all the good stuff, so let's get started. This is going to be about your rock fishing, your saltwater fishing in Canada on a budget. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I used to do articles. I always link to the article website I, I had, or I still have, but I never actually really updated it now. But I link to it below. The One of the first ever articles I ever wrote was about fishing in Seattle, fishing off docks and pilings. I called it urban rock fishing. And I basically took that same concept and applied it to British Columbia, although not as good in British Columbia, in my opinion. But there is some good potential. I'm going to get into that. So, um, with urban rock fishing, what you're going to have is basically you're in the middle of whatever city you're in, and you're fishing for various kinds of rockfish off the shore, is what I call urban rock fishing. So we're talking copper rockfish, uh, kelp greenlings if you find them, link cods if you can find those. I've seen someone catch a link off the jetty, that was fun. Uh any other kind of miscellaneous rockfish you can imagine. For those of you know on the west, if you're if you're on the west coast and you fish for these things before, you know that when you're on a rockfish spot, you cook dozens of different species. That is a common practice. So with that in mind, um, only difference is I like this more than deep water rock fishing, just because deep water rock fishing you're using eight, ten, twelve ounce sinkers and a bottom rig. So when you hook a one pound rockfish, it's not very much fun. But when you go and hook a one pound rockfish on 10 pound test and a little bucktail, it's a little half ounce, little quarter ounce, half ounce jig, it's a lot more enjoyable because you can actually feel like you're fighting something. So back to the original thing. What are you going to do? So I'm going to go into, uh, so flying into Canada, what you do is uh, you fly into a place you fly into Victoria, which isn't actually Victoria. It's called Sydney, British Columbia. So the same airport runs between. So here on a so here on the main island, here'd be Sydney, on this side of the island, and you go down. Here is where the main city of Victoria is. Downtown, all the stuff to go do over there. I'll cover that in future podcasts. All the stuff to go do, how to do can on a budget. So I'm just going to mostly to fishing. Uh, so yeah, so when you fly in, there's little lodges in Sydney itself. You could also stay in an Airbnb like what I did in, in the actual main area of Sydney, and you can take buses everywhere. That's the honest truth. I'll cover this more in the budget, but yeah, buses are pretty cheap, long story short, and you can take them to get any spot you need to in one or two buses. So it's a worthwhile way of transport. Also, you just get to see more. A lot of people agree on this. You just get to see more when you if you get if you're in a place that's safe enough, you get if you take buses and walk. Like I walked two to three miles on one stretch. And it was great because I gotta just see little shops. I could walk in for a few minutes and pick up on little niche things that I wouldn't have found otherwise if I just took, say, a cab or a lift straight to my spot or rented a car and went straight there. Because then you find this cool little bookstore. You find this cool little store on the side, and you go, oh, cool, spend a few minutes here, look at something. It lets you see more of the town or city you're visiting on your trip. So especially if you're taking the time, you're paying for a vacation, walk it, enjoy, and just see the place you're going to. Probably shouldn't say that, but never hurts to say it. Okay, so now you know how to get around. Now let's talk about gear and how to actually prepare for these things and what to pack for. Uh, rock fishing is similar. Urban rock fishing is similar to like what spotted bay bass tackle is. Uh, for those who know what spotted bay bass or kind of like pitching little plastics and little jigs for speckled trout in the docks. Similar tackle. So we're talking 10, maybe 15 pound test to the higher end. That's 10 to 15 straight mono or fluorocarbon. If you want to go with a braid, I'd probably say like a 30 pound braid will be plenty with like a 10 to 15 pound liter. The advantage of that is you can just pack one rod and just multitask on that one rod. So either way, take your pick. Um, you don't need to worry about any sort of fancy 
stretching lines or rods for treble hooks because I didn't use a whole lot of treble hooks for rockfish. Maybe for like my small mouth, but I'll cover that later podcast. But for the rockfish, they were mostly on jigs and other kinds of stuff. So I'll go to that right now. Lures, what do you want to go with? I caught my rockfish on a bucktail. You could use a bucktail jig, which is what I did, and it was effective. You could probably use in the similar ballpark. You could use soft plastics. Guys, other guys on the jetties were, and other saltwater spots are recommending soft plastics as well. Little jig heads, all within say quarter to half ounce. You can get away with a quarter ounce and fish just fine in a lot of these spots. So with that being said, quarter ounce, ten pound test, and you hook a small little rockfish. You're having fun on little on bass tackle. So and that's tackle. I assume most freshwater guys have forget about saltwater 10 12 pound test is something that most freshwater bass guys will have you just need a rod that you can not be afraid to pack i reckon i have a 40 dollar fib link rod that works just fine four piece rod um you want to find like a i've heard other good kinds of telescopics and travel rods but whatever you want to do rod rated for say 8 to 17 if you're going on the heavier side with line, probably that's probably about a rated for 10 to 20. I don't use all the fancy actions because different rods are built differently. So a bass rod, it might be pretty standard to say a medium heavy is 10 to 20. But sometimes like a saltwater rod will be rated differently or a saltwater brand or like a lineup of saltwater rods will be brand differently than say your bass rods. So I'm going to try to avoid that. So those are the rods, uh, reels, nothing fancy. Your standard bat, standard baitcaster reels work just fine. Um, you probably could use spinning, but for the bouncing off the bottom type stuff, I just feel more comfortable doing it with a the way my hand set up. I just feel more comfortable doing it with a bait casting setup. Uh, also the straight mod, you just fine with that. If you want to go spinning and braid, you're not comfortable with the baitcaster, perfectly fine. So that is that. So rod, real line, lures, all that good stuff. You probably, I didn't fish bait this trip. I thought I could get away with it. I did for the first little bit, which is what deceived me. That's kind of like the, the thing that like you're, if you get bit on the first cast, it kind of deceives you and you never really plan it. That's why it says it's about, that's why a lot of people say it's bad luck to get bit on the first cast. I'll explain that story later. But, so I thought I could get away with using artificials the entire time. Didn't get around trying to, find or buy cut bait if you want to go do that and fish dropper loops you could probably do that if you want to do that I'd probably say about one ounce dropper loop is all you really need because this is all inside protected stuff so even if you're you're not going anywhere heavily current based one ounce dropper loop uh little hooks and yeah so that is the tackle i'd recommend now all this fishing is going to differentiate depending on the spot you're going to. So the fish, this fish I actually caught was when you get off the airport was actually in Sydney bouncing in near some like rock structure. So what I had was there was like a rock chain right here and there was a, you were standing on this little bridge dock pier platform, whatever you want to call it. And it was somewhere along the deeper end of the rocks right before we hit the pier. So if you could find that good mix of say rock, there was some, there was some like some sort of, algae or grass in there too so rock grass and you had that you had those bridge pilings all three with a little bit of depth was a perfect combo and understand a little bit of depth we this water looked like it was probably 10 12 foot it wasn't the when you think rockfish you think 20 30 40 foot at the shallow end but they'll hit just fine in 10 i've even heard talk to some guys and that's what we get into right now so that was the only time I actually caught a rockfish this trip. So it wasn't the most productive saltwater adventure, I will say. My freshwater is way more productive. I'll get into another podcast. But with that being said, you have... Uh, now we're going to get some other adventures. So I tried fishing around downtown Sydney. Uh, was not successful. I clear water. I couldn't see anything. Well, understand, that doesn't really mean much. Like, spotted bay bass fishing, you can see inside the water, but that doesn't always mean what you see is what you're going to find. Like, they'll hide under the dock pilings a lot, or they'll hide under the dock structure a lot of time. But I just didn't get bit near the docks. I tried, and I tried with 
everything, little three inch flukes. I've messed around with everything. I just couldn't get bit inside the hardcore harbor stuff. Next, Jetty. So, this is the place everyone tells you to go to. They call it the breakwater in Canada. I call it a jetty. It's the same thing. I will say there are some good perks to the jetty, even though I don't catch a fish on it. I'll right now. Good perks. Incredibly easy to walk on. You could almost light run on it. That may seem like a weird thing to say, but a lot of jetties have weird jaggedy rocks. You have to kind of like climb around them, do like a parkour type stunt. Versus this breakwater jetty was built intentionally to have flat rocks like this, give or take. So if you really want to, you could do like a light jog to wherever you want to go on this jetty. Breakwater, same difference. Now, that's perk number one of fishing on this jetty. Perk number two. Perk number three, I'll get to in a minute. But perk number two, you have feather boa kelp, and it is within casting distance, and it makes up a serious kelp bed on the breakwater. Why is this perk? Because it just looks and fishes really damn cool. If you have never, if you're from the Gulf and you've never fished a kelp bed before, I would recommend going, even if you don't hook a single fish on that outing. It's a cool spectacle because a kelp bed is essentially grass fishing, but it will go from, say, 20 feet of water and up to the surface and fan over. So you could be fishing 20 feet of water for what should be a bottom fish, and you will still hook those bottom fish on the surface because they could still be hiding in the top parts of the grass. That's what calico fishing is in the kelp beds, essentially. Or theoretically speaking, excuse me. So southern, so like Southern California, some parts of northern and central, you have giant kelp, which is the one that has multiple bulbs and multiple leaves. So you have, say, one stem right here. Bulb is what keeps the plant afloat, and then on the side you have what we call what you call blade, which is essentially the leaf, and you have that all throughout like on a vine. But feather boa kelp is really cool. Even for someone who enjoy, who enjoys fishing and has fished other kinds of kelp before, it's cool because it's one giant... I've never seen it before. So you have one giant stem, you have one giant bulb, and you have a bunch of blades sticking off that bulb for, say, 5-10 feet. Maybe even more. So it was a really cool spectacle just to look around and see it. And I got bit off that jetty once or twice. It just did not click. Um, and if you want to fish off that jetty, I'd recommend going a little bit heavier. I'd recommend almost like a calico outfit. A little bit bigger swim bait. It's just because... Oh, and definitely fish a weedless bait. I didn't... I goofed on that one. I failed. I did not bring weedless, and I should have. You're cute. If you, know, if you don't know what I'm referring to, I'm cute. Weedless, you're... Weedless swim baits that we use for cal that we use for calico fishing with like the, the we with the uh, keel weighted weedless hooks. I'd recommend bringing those in a swim bait in a heartbeat, just because it will be much easier to climb through the canopies of this kelp without a problem. Now, schmoozing with some of the other guys, they, they were talking about guys who caught a forty inch link cod off a break off a jetty. So for those of us in California, that's like. A 40-inch link cod is something you drool over, gets jackpot, you win 200 bucks off the fish in maybe 200 feet of water. But here, you're catching the thing off a jetty and on just an ordinary outing, which I thought was cool. You don't get that in Cal in Southern California. That I now understand why a lot of the guys hype the Alaska trips where they go for those 30, 40-pound link cods. It's a cool story thing to go do to go for um yeah so they got a giant link on that morning they just they're keeping it they kept it so i gotta see the thing it was nice and they were saying for the what they call the black bass which are these rockfish they're saying on the smaller side you could use this little swim baits little grubs and just they'll hit near the surface so i tried that i just couldn't get time to commit so that is everything that you should know about how to prep and fish salt water from the shore for in British Columbia, Canada, specifically 
Victoria and Sydney. And just a cheap little outing. You don't have to spend, you don't have to break the bank to go on a good, tr- to go on a good fishing outing. You can enjoy yourself messing around from the shore with a couple pack rods and that'll be fun on its own. If you like this kind of stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and let's have fun with this one. Uh, leave a comment. What is your biggest rockfish or link cod that you've ever gotten? If you've not gotten one, put it on the list. Put up the trip and make it worth it. And yeah, so what I'd say is if you have not gotten one, give it a try. Head up. But if you have, my personal best, I'll put it, I'll say it right here, is Give me a minute. Yeah, so my PB is about a four to five pound salmon grouper. Got off a half day boat with sheer dumb luck. So yeah, have fun guys and enjoy the comment section.